pristine nature, hidden landscapes and enchanting wilderness, all in the middle of Europe. Welcome to the Balkan Express, a journey of discovery through five young nations in southeastern Europe. Mountainous and wild in the south, flat and fertile in the north, that's Serbia, an undiscovered jewel of nature. We'll encounter snakes, bears and rare animals, admire how ecclesiastical motifs are reproduced on modern accessories, and observe the largest griffon vulture population in the Balkans. Although Serbia is the largest of the new nations in the Balkans, its chaotic recent history has meant it's still relatively unknown to the rest of the world. Yet, it boasts vast swathes of untouched nature and a rich cultural and historic heritage. Our first destination lies in the west of the country, the Tara National Park. The National Park lies on the border to Bosnia and Herzegovina by the Dirina River. Miodrag Petrovic and Ranko Milanovic are park rangers. One of their more daring tasks is tracking the bears and ensuring their welfare. Every day, the rangers comb the forests and trace the tracks left by the shy animals. They deliver important information about the behavior and habits of the bears. The cave up there. You can see the path on the left that the bear probably uses to reach it. Bears are very skillful. It's hard to believe as their bodies seem very clumsy. But it moves along the same paths as a chamois. Anywhere the bear can reach with his paws, where he can grab hold of something, he can pull himself up and get over it. Two thirds of a bear's strength are in his front paws. His home is the thick woods that cover three quarters of the national park. The rare Pancic spruce was discovered here and only grows in a small area. The lynx, wolf and wildcat can also be found in these woods. The symbol of the Tara are the bears, which are protected and have been under observation since 2006. This is a print with claws. You can see one, two, three, four, five. The first bear went there, and this one followed, because the earth is smudged with this print. Look how big, from here to here. A giant. With the help of camera traps, the rangers can determine the movement and number of individual bears. The shots help to monitor the health of the animals and assess when they need help. The bears aren't endangered in the Tara mountains. This is the last refuge for bears in Serbia. We've become something like a bear reproduction center for the whole of Serbia because the numbers have been so constant. Our main responsibility is to protect the bear population and ensure their survival, for us as well as for future generations, with the knowledge that we have a great treasure here that we can share with others. The forests in the Tara are a paradise for ramblers. Some of the peaks can even be reached by train. The Shargan 8, a unique narrow gauge heritage railway. It was built in 1921 
in the form of the figure of eight and took four years to complete. A masterful feat of engineering. It was once the most important transport link between Belgrade and the Adriatic coast. A joy for any train conductor. Working here is beautiful and interesting. Every day, people come here from all over the world to admire this unique railway route, take a ride and enjoy the landscape. This route is something epic, even for the people who work here. From the peaks of the Tara and the hilly landscape of Western Serbia, we travel to the flat north. Our destination is Vojvodina, an autonomous province. Vojvodina, seemingly endless stretches of fields, rivers, and vast marshlands. Since the Ramsar Convention 16 years ago, the nature reserve of Zazavica has been under protection as a wetland of international importance. Mikhailo Stankovic is a scientist at the reserve. He spends most of his time in the boat, doing field work and always on the lookout for new, unknown and endangered species. He's already discovered 48, just in Zazavica. The special thing about this place, also from an international perspective, is the rare plant and animal species. For many, this is the only place in Europe where they still are. Many were considered extinct in Serbia until I found them again, a hundred years later. Mikhailo's terrain is the Zazavica River, the lifeline of the reservation. The river is covered by a green carpet of plant life, sometimes almost too dense to get through. And these are the most interesting spots. Amongst other things, 250 different types of algae can be found flourishing here. The samples Mikhailo is collecting will be sent to the university in Belgrade for analysis. The Zazavica reservation is one of the best explored nature parks in Serbia, all thanks to Mikhailo. Sometimes he encounters shy friends. Uh, an Esculapian, that's a non-venomous snake. It's the one featured on the rod of Asclepius, the symbol of the pharmacy, the so-called Zamenis Longissimus. It's one of the largest types of snake here. It probably went to look for prey on the tree. Rodents are its main diet, but it also eats eggs and birds. The Zazavica Reserve is also known for breeding dwindling traditional farm animal species. Along the far-reaching meadows, Balkan donkeys and Podolan cattle enjoy the velvety grasslands. The Balkan donkey was a reliable pack animal that is now no longer needed. At Zazavica, it has other good uses. 
Podium. Can I come in? Sure. Which ones are we milking today? There's a reason it's called stubborn as a mule. The milk of the Jennies is used to make cosmetics and supposedly the most expensive cheese in the world. 1,000 euros for one kilo of donkey cheese. I'm too small. My arms are too short to reach. It's hard milking them. I'm drenched in sweat. How much did you get? Very little. It's difficult because they have small teats, which are hard to reach. And they only give as much milk as the foal needs, so we always steal a little from them. We milk them three times a day. It's best early in the mornings. It changes from day to day. On average, we get about 200 milliliters of milk from each jenny. Hello, there you are, just in time. Tamara Vladislavievich regularly buys the donkey milk for her high-quality cosmetics. The city of Sremska Mitrovica, previously Sermia, was one of the capitals of the Roman Empire. Now it's a town of only regional importance. Tamara's shop is in the center. This is where she makes her special soaps and cosmetics with donkey milk. Donkey milk has been used throughout history. Cleopatra used it, as did Napoleon's sister. It was already considered a good cosmetic then. Recent studies have shown that the milk is very mineral rich, which means a cream can be absorbed deep into the skin. It also smooths and nourishes the skin making some marks even disappear. Tamara's products contain up to 60% of the valuable donkey milk. The low-fat, vitamin-rich milk is also good for asthma and bronchitis and is also used to treat wounds. These are old recipes that have been handed down from pharmacists here in Mitrovica and which all contain local ingredients. A return to tradition and the force of nature. The Jennies from Zazavica also do their part. Our journey takes us across Vojvodina, and our destination lies in the east of the province. We're visiting two villages. One is known for its reeds, and the other for its unusual painters. Vojvodina is a part of the Pannonian lowlands in the center of the Balkans an incredibly fertile region. The heavy soil and warm climate provide the perfect conditions for farming. The fields reach as far as the eye can see, and everything grows in abundance. Vojvodina is the breadbasket of Serbia. Between the Tais and Begai rivers lies Tsarskabara, the imperial swamp. A floodplain with over 250 types of bird and a popular research territory for ornithologists. 
The region is known beyond its borders for its quality reeds. Pyramids of dried reeds adorn the landscape in the springtime. Handling the reeds takes a lot of skill and finesse. Peter Kovac has years of experience. The hardest part is getting them level here, and after that it gets easier. I then sort them according to length, starting with the longest and then the shorter ones, and finally the 1.2 meter ones. This tough manual labor guarantees the quality of the dried reeds and ensures the upkeep of an old tradition. Reeds are one of the most sought after natural insulating materials in the world. The village Belo Blato is the center of reed production in the area. It's a typical Vojvodina village with straight streets and colorful, neat houses. Around a thousand people live here and almost all make a living from the reed industry. On the Gorda family farm, Kriko's father was already working with reeds. Now, he's sorting the lengths of the bundles with his son, Boris. One forty, one eighty, two meters. Those are the standard lengths. We make sure we make the most of the reeds. Mirko and his older brother, Adam, export all their produce. One says the best reeds come from this area, but in truth it's really the long-held tradition of preparing them. We know how to handle them and how the process works, and this knowledge has been passed from generation to generation. Even the machines have been doing the job for over 50 years. They bind the separate stalks to mats. These mats are used as natural building materials, as a base for plaster and as material for insulation. Pelo Blato is also a unique village due to its ethnic diversity. Since the 19th century, 25 different nationalities have been living peacefully side by side in this fertile region. Each inhabitant speaks at least three languages and all get on well. When Valenta and Marika meet their friends for an afternoon of gossip, it's a linguistic journey through half of Europe. The ladies all have different nationalities and mother tongues. Rather than a problem, they see it as a gift. They're proud of their differences and their harmonious coexistence. I speak Slovak with her, Hungarian with her, with Marika Slovakian, with Anushka Hungarian, with this Marika too, Serbian with my neighbor, and I am Bulgarian. My neighbors are Slovak, Hungarian, and she's Bosnian. I am Bulgarian and we all live together and understand each other without any difficulties in complete harmony. I am Bosnian but of Serbian origin. I love Bosnia and all its people. The inhabitants of Belo Blato grow old together with tolerance and respect. Indeed, it's the only way they know how. Not even the Yugoslav war was able to create tension between the individual nations. 
Languages have always connected us, as has the fact that we have two Christmases and two Easter's. We celebrate all the festivals, we stick together. We don't care who is Hungarian and who is Bulgarian. We respect everyone, and that's what the love between people and community is made of. I am Slovakian, I speak Slovak and Serb. I swear in Slovak, but also in Serbian. <laughs> Peaceful and happy. Belo Blato is an example that coexistence between many people and cultures is possible. The arable land has always drawn in people from different parts of Europe. 26 nations, minorities and ethnic groups all officially live in Vojvodina. It's mainly Slovaks that live in Kovacica. It's a village of farmers that has reached global renown through what started as a hobby, naive painting. We meet Pavel Babka in his garden. He's the founder of the Babka Gallery for Naive Art and a supporter of young artists. He considers Eva Hirkova as one of his great talents. I need new pumpkins. As many as you want. Can I choose some? Of course. Pavel advised Eva to only paint pumpkins for a while. Their irregular shape should supposedly encourage her to find new painting styles. Eva receives advice from Pavel and an endless supply of pumpkins. You used to tie these around you for swimming so you wouldn't go under. Eva is one of the youngest of over 50 artists in Kovacica. They jokingly call themselves the painting farmers, as they do not pay heed to perspective or anatomy, but are still successful. Their paintings are exhibited in museums and galleries worldwide. When I work on a pumpkin, I already know how I will paint it when I'm washing it. The ideas come from themselves. It didn't used to be like this, but now it is. Maybe because I have gotten older. It depends on my mood. When I am happy, I'll draw a lot of images, take more joy in it and play around. It's really more of a game for me than serious painting. Naive artistry from Kovacica is a phenomenon. In 1939, two locals made the first pieces and established a style of painting that now counts as one of the most famous schools of naive art in the world. 63 painters of the Kovacica school and their work are on the list of Serbia's intangible cultural heritage. With his gallery, Pavel Babka looks after the marketing of the works and supports young talent. His pupil Miro Raska, with his individual style, has even exhibited in Paris. <coughs> these two have turned out well, these two groups. I like the upward swing very much. Miro's work is notable because he's not let himself be influenced by the big ones that we that the whole world has praised. Miro's work does not look similar to anything else. I don't think one should ask art historians about naive painting. What they think is not important. It's better left to the sociologists, anthropologists and ethnologists to offer answers as to why these people are painting and what their motives are. We leave the colourful world of naive painting and head southeast to the Danube, which is the border to Romania and has forged a unique ravine landscape into the Carpathian Mountains. It's known as the Iron Gate. For 600 kilometres, the Danube flows through Serbia. 
By its banks are testaments to its long history. Along its meandering course, the river changes its character again and again. Before the Danube reaches the mountains, it shows all of its different faces. Meadows, acacia woods, ideal nesting and breeding grounds for many types of bird. At the Golubats fortress, the river becomes narrow and deep. The castle complex dates back to the 13th century and was of great strategic importance. Today, the Jeredap National Park begins here on the Serbian banks and is the largest in the country. It's famous for its diverse flora and fauna, particularly along the steep Danube ravine. Along the banks up to the mouth? Yes, yes. No one here, probably because of the low water level. Probably because it's low and very clear and cold. There'll be little catch. Neither pros or hobby fishers to be seen. The rangers ensure that the park's strict regulations are being followed. Good day. Hi. Can we see your fishing license? Of course. Fisherman Dejan Rancic has a valid license for 2015. Here I fill in when he was checked and that he's fulfilling professional fisherman requirements. Catch anything? Here. You know which ones are forbidden at the moment? Yes. OK, all good. Thank you. It changes from year to year. Sometimes there's a lot of catfish, then only a few, then another species of fish dominates. It always changes. Overall, there's less fish now, and also because of the dam, which disturbs the natural migration. But on the whole, it's not bad. It all depends on the water level. Djerdab, the Iron Gate one of the most impressive carved-out valleys in Europe. Here, at its most narrow point, the Danube is a mere 150 meters wide, but almost 90 meters deep. The current meanders through the wooded tributaries of the Carpathians for a good 100 kilometers, carving gorges and canyons of stunning beauty. The wildlife in Jeredap National Park is mainly undisturbed, mostly due to strict visitor rules. Areas under the highest protection level can only be visited when accompanied by a park ranger. This is Alexander Stojanovic's daily routine. <laughs> We have no set work hours. We work all day, controlling the Danube and the woods. We keep an eye on the number of visitors. There's only a limited amount of people allowed into the park a day. And that's how we manage to protect the wildlife so it stays the way it is. From the Iron Gate, we move in a westerly direction, into the valley of the Zapadna Morava River, with its medieval cloisters and brass band music. The three large meanders wind westward of the Morava around the Ofchar and Kablar mountains. In the 15th and 16th centuries, many monasteries were established along the banks of the river, where the monks retreated to an inaccessible solitude from the Ottomans. Today, nine of these monasteries remain. The designer Marushka Topalovic is known throughout Serbia for her high-quality, hand-painted silk accessories. For her, this picturesque scenery 
and the monasteries, places of contemplation, are an inspiration. The Serbian Orthodox monastery on the banks of the Sapadna Morava. Built at the end of the 14th century, its original form has remained relatively unchanged. Over 300 monks used to live here, yet today it is a convent with a grand total of 12 nuns. The Church of the Holy Nicholas is the oldest in the Ovchar Kabla Gorge. The frescoes showing rare depictions of Jesus make it a place of great artistic and historical importance. Timeless beauty, the ornate window alcoves, motifs that Marushka looks for in the churches and which she reinvents for her work. It's wonderful being surrounded by old monasteries and tradition. For me, it's a source of inspiration. Is it not the purpose of art to bring something into the future, to use history and create something contemporary out of it? We accompany Marushka into the nearby Chachak, the cultural and financial capital of the region. In her house at the end of the city, Marushka has a studio and a showroom. As part of a small family business, she has been creating works of art on silk that have adorned famous figures from all over the world, as well as the Serbian Olympic team. Each hand-painted silk scarf is unique. With a steady hand and artistic flair, she transforms the church decoration into a modern pattern for a scarf. I can't do the same thing twice. I am seduced by a motif. It's a game to make the next one even better. Whoever is lucky enough to work with colour lives in a different world. It's a duty to show this world to others who might take joy from it. A sea of deciduous trees as far as the eye can see. Central Serbia is especially rich in oak, acorn and beech tree dominated forests, an important income source for this economically weakened country. In the large brick oven, charcoal is produced. Only the best wood is used, beech wood. The right mix of common beech and copper beech determines the quality of the coal. The thousand-year-old trade, which has virtually died out in Europe, offers people here new opportunities. Charcoal from experienced oven masters is a sought-after Serbian commodity. Dihan Gajic only sells his coal abroad. That's how he supports his family. There's no other work. It's our only opportunity as long as the forests are still there. The only thing in the region. Businesses are broken, as they were all state-owned. Now there's only the military or the police. We had this specialist training, now we have to do this. No, but it's good this way. Velvet meadows, fields and orchards decorate the landscape. Plums and raspberries flourish in this sloping terrain. Most families live off the raspberry trade. Serbia is the third largest global exporter of the fragile fruit.
Dion Jevzic also grows the sweet red berries. He's a star in Serbia, a prize-winning master trumpeter of Balkan brass band music, which Amir Kusturica's films brought to worldwide appreciation. But he can't live off his music alone. I've got three jobs. I'm a trumpeter, I work in the Serbian military, and I'm a raspberry farmer. Here you need six jobs to survive. Times are like that at the moment. There you are. When did you arrive? Dejan has been leading his orchestra for 15 years. They rehearse four times a week for the wildest brass band festival in the world, Gucha. As three-time trumpet master champion, Dejan will give a solo concert on the main stage. A great honor. Let's play Wild Horse. Try to make the beginning explosive. Let's see if that works. The trumpet is the instrument that has accompanied all the important events in the centuries-old history of this region. In Serbia's history, men were led into battle by the sound of trumpets. Today, it's a joyful call to celebrate. It brings people together. There's no hate and no difference between people with the trumpet. Gucha, a sleepy town of 3,000 souls, explodes once a year in August. Around 400,000 people come from all over the world and flood its streets to listen to the best brass band orchestras in Serbia. To play in front of 10, 15, 20,000 people isn't that easy. When I won the first prize, when all these people were listening to me and cheering for me, the whole audience, something every trumpeter dreams of, is what every trumpeter must have experienced at least once. It's an indescribable feeling. Our Balkan Express journey is heading towards its final Serbian destination, an unusual river and the home of the largest flock of griffin vultures in the Balkans. The Uvac River has carved into the limestone cliffs to create a gorge that is several hundred meters deep. Its meanders are absolutely unique and due to their beauty, are also called the Serbian Colorado. The griffin vulture enjoys the protection of a nature reserve primarily to ensure its survival. It is a rare and endangered old world eagle species. Goran Bjelanovic and Steva Radovanovic are at the reservation every day to observe the colony. In the 1990s, this impressive bird was almost extinct in Europe, and only six pairs inhabited the Uvac Gorge. Efforts to restore and protect the species have been successful. After 25 years, 
The reservation is home to 85 nesting pairs and more than 500 birds. This makes it one of the biggest colonies of this eagle type in the Balkans and one of the largest in Europe. Here on the Cholovica rock, which is its name, four pairs are nesting. They've got four young ones. Each pair has got one. The ones that were just flying are bringing them food, and the other parent stays with the young because they are still small. The male and the female take turns. They never leave their young alone. One hunts for food, the other keeps watch. Most of the reservation is closed to the public to ensure nature's balance is preserved. The tributaries of the Uvats River offer a spawning ground for rare fish species. Between the months of March and May, the common nays, a type of carp, comes to this small stream to lay its eggs. And so starts the search for the needle in the haystack. Goran has a lucky find. The future of the carp is secured. The fish have laid their eggs there. That is very good. There are eggs. Just eggs or still fish? No, just the spawn. They're finished laying. Now we just need the chub. We called this hidden Serbia because barely anyone knows our meanders and the Uvats River, even though it's very significant due to its biological and geological diversity. It's important that more people get to know this place. It's a vast and important water reservoir that could one day become a very important source of drinking water for us. Fertile landscapes unforgettable rivers and a rainbow of cultures living side by side. Serbia is a barely discovered country in the heart of the Balkans.